In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to slice up 3D files that are too big to be able to print on your printer in one piece. This is part three of a series I'm doing on building a Boba Fett cosplay. And in this part, we're going to talk about the back piece and the jetpack. There's a few pieces to this Galactic Armory 3D file that we need to slice up so that they'll fit on our printer. What you're looking at on screen is the back piece. Now Galactic Armory has included a cut up, sliced up file of the back piece, and that's what you're looking at here. And this is exactly how I printed it. Six separate pieces stood up on their end, it's fairly easy to print. However, if we go and look at the jetpack, it's not sliced up into these convenient files ready to go for us to print. So I'm going to show you how we can do that here today. I also want to note that in his file he's included a solid version and a hollow version. If you're somebody that wants to put electronics or a fog machine, light things like that into your jetpack. You can see that even the rocket alone that goes on top of the jetpack is also too big for my printer. So we're gonna have to cut that one up too. I do want to also note that in this video I'm using the Mandalorian Season 2 version of the files. It's important for you to note that the Book of Boba Fett version looks completely different. His purchasable files now come with both. It's just important to know which version you're trying to make so you know which version you need to print. Nearly every single piece of armor is completely different on the Book of Boba version than it was in the Mandalorian Season 2 version. Anyway, onto this tutorial. The program that I'm using now is a free program called Mesh Mixer. It's a simple program that you can use to modify STL and OBJ files. We used it in part one of this series to cut magnet holes out of some of our earpieces for the helmet. For this we need a simple straight cut, so we're going to go to Edit, and then click Plane Cut. When we click it, we're going to get this plane that goes all the way across the screen in all directions. This is where we're going to be cutting. Just adjust this and move it to where you want it. I personally, for the jetpack, cut it right at the start of the piece that connects the jetpack to the back piece. I might cut a little bit of extra material off of that piece, but it's okay. It'll flatten it out and actually make it easier for us to print. Once we have our plane cut where we want it, we're going to change where it says discard half because we actually want to keep both of these halves for print. We're going to change that to slice and keep both. And we're also going to double check that our second selection is set on a remeshed fill. This is going to close back off that area with a nice flat plane where we cut it. And there it is is cut in half, except it doesn't look like it's cut in half. So remaining under the edit menu, we need to click separate shells. And over on the right side of your screen, you're going to see where it separates this into two different objects that we can toggle the visibility, size, independently of each other. Don't forget to delete that extra piece that we don't need anymore. Since this is still too big to fit on my printer, I'm going to now cut each of these halves in half. We're going to select our plane cut again and then rotate it exactly 90 degrees. If your cursor is within the circle of those dotted lines, you're gonna have a hard time finding 90. Bring your cursor even with all those dotted lines that go around, and it's gonna snap your rotation to every five degrees. Keep going till it says 90, so you know you're perfectly straight up and down. And we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. Cutting, making sure we keep both, separating the shells, then we need to do that to the top and the bottom. Once you're done with this, you're going to have four separate pieces of the jetpack that you can toggle, click on, and select. What you're going to want to do is select one, make it visible, make all the other three invisible, and export that as your first file. And then do that with the other three, and you're going to have four separate STLs that you can bring into your slicer of choice to 3D print. Looking at the hollow jetpack piece, say we wanted to cut holes to be able to run electronics to the thrusters to get them to rotate, or if we wanted holes to be able to put tubes through for, say, a fog machine. I'm going to import some sort of cylinder, I actually used one of the magnet holes that we created in part one of this tutorial. You're going to rotate it and get it into position, deselect uniform scaling, and then scale up one of the axes by a decent amount, in this case it was Y, and now you can just move it into place. You can select your main object, select the object you want to be the hole, and select Boolean difference. And this is going to cut your hole that you can route tubes to if you wanted to put in a fog machine. You can do the same thing at the top to run electronics to the little antenna piece. We're also going to need to bring in the rocket and do the same thing. I gave it a horizontal cut fairly high up the rocket. I wanted to still have those little rectangular strip pieces so that I knew exactly how to align it. But you could cut it, say, somewhere in here, and it might really help hide where you fuse it together. Just do your plain cut again and keep both. Then export each one individually and you can send them to your slicer. This is now what one of those four pieces of the jetpack looks like in Kira. You can see here why I sliced it along that attachment piece, because now it can also sit flush and we don't even need any supports on it. The only place on this entire file that we might need supports is this little bridge piece where the attachment part connects to the main piece and then underneath your smaller attachment part up there. I hope that quick tutorial was helpful in showing you how you can break up pieces and make them smaller to make them easier to print. Part four in this Boba Fett series will be coming out soon. In that video, I'm gonna show you how you can glue these large 3D printed pieces together and then plastic weld them together to get them to have a permanent bond. Thanks for watching.